Moscow is pointing the finger at Washington, baselessly claiming the U.S. directed Ukraine to carry out this alleged drone strike on the Kremlin. Kiev has also de denied involvement, and so has the U.S. Here's what a top White House official told CNN earlier today about this latest assertion from Russia. There's a word that comes to mind that I'm obviously not uh, not appropriate to use on national TV. I would just tell you Mr. Peskov's lying. I mean, that's obviously it's a ludicrous claim. The United States had nothing to do with this. We don't even know exactly what happened here, uh, Caitlin, but I can assure you the United States had, had no role in it whatsoever. Strong words from the administration there. For Russia, though, it may not matter who did this. Vladimir Putin's forces have already used it as a pretext for retaliation, unleashing a fierce wave of attacks on Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities. Drones that fired on Odessa even had messages on them. Take a look. This reads for Moscow and for the Kremlin. That's according to the Ukrainian military. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh is in Ukraine. And Nick, Kyiv is seeing its worst attacks in months. We know that an oil refinery was hit in Russia. It seems that both sides are really escalating here. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, what we've been seeing over the past three or four days here in Ukraine is an increased tempo of Russian strikes, often hitting civilian areas as far as we can see. Last night, uh, Kiev saying that the last three nights are kind of the worst since the year began. Last night, many drones taken down out of the sky, not actually hitting targets in the capital. Similar story over Odessa as well in the south of the country. So compared to previous nights where we've seen uh, cities across the country with civilian targets hit and the loss of life last night not the worst but yesterday in Kherson city recently liberated from Russian occupiers 24 people lost their lives in the shelling of a shopping center and a railway station clear civilian areas being hit by repeated shelling now this isn't really I think the escalation Ukrainians are worried about. When Russian in that statement where they presented no evidence but said there'd been an attempted assassination on the president said that they reserved the right to retaliate. Even today, uh, Dmitry Priskov, the Kremlin spokesperson, didn't go into what that would necessarily mean. He said that Vladimir Putin was calm and considered after this incident and even referred to how the damage to the Kremlin roof was two bits of copper that probably would get fixed later on today. So a lot of concern here about what this may be teeing up in terms of a Russian response, but Ukraine's counteroffensive likely imminent. All right, Nick Payton Walsh with the latest from Ukraine. Thanks so much for that update. And Jim, now we've got those details. You guys have some analysis over here. Let's try to figure out how credible these claims are. Uh, joining me now, uh, we have uh, someone who knows a thing or two uh, about this, retired Brigadier General uh, Steve Anderson. First, to get to this claim that this was a Ukrainian strike on the Kremlin, let's look at the sites of Ukrainian strikes on Russian territory so far. Again, here's the, here's the border of Ukraine. They've been able to strike Belgorod, just a couple dozen miles away from Ukraine, down in Crimea, certainly accessible from Ukrainian territory, also in Krasnodar. This one would be 300 miles into, sorry, didn't draw the straight line, but 300 miles in a straight line uh, into Ukrainian territory. How credible is that? It is not credible, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, it really, there's no way, I think, that the, the uh, Ukrainian drones would be able to penetrate some of the most sophisticated mm -hmm. air defenses in the world. 500 miles or so from Kiev all the way to Moscow, it's just not going to happen. I mean, that's just not a scenario that's really reasonable. Uh, and, and I imagine those, those air defenses would be particularly intent on protecting this area up Absolutely. Here. Yeah. They'd be focused on the Moscow, and they have, again, incredibly uh, efficient and effective air defenses. Uh, the last time that any kind of penetration occurred was in 1987, 35 years ago, with a little Piper Cub that was able to fly into Red Square. But since then, it's been yeah. locked down pretty tight. And certainly, with the war going on, they're going to be I incredibly effective. Okay, let's look at the, stri the strikes. Uh, th this is where Russia has struck since this, uh, this attack on the Kremlin, calling them, in effect, retaliatory strikes, uh, they've been hitting Kharkiv, certainly a frequent target, of course, close to Russian territory. Uh, down here in Kherson, recently taken back from Russia by Ukrainian forces, and, of course, the capital, Kyiv. A lot of talk about targeting the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky. Are these attempts to do that? There might very well, Jim. I mean, that would be something I'd be very mm. worried about. Um, you know, the, the false flag that I think that we saw yesterday of attack mm -hmm. on the Kremlin uh, maybe sets the stage for, hey, look, they went after me, Vladimir Putin saying, now it's my turn to go after Zelensky. So yeah. I would definitely, if I was uh, on his security detail, uh, 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 Zelensky's security, I'd definitely step up my game. 
but you know, this is terrorizing the people, terrorizing yeah. the president. Is something that that's the, that's how they've been playing this whole thing, and that's their only real play. You, you mentioned false flag. That would be a Russian attack claiming to be a Ukrainian attack. By the way, Russia attempted several of these when I was in Ukraine at the start of the invasion, which the U.S. intelligence exposed. Said, hey. These are not Ukrainian attacks. It's a Russian plan, a propaganda plan here. We had a remarkable charge made by a former Russian lawmaker who spoke to my colleague Matthew Chance about another possibility for the origin of this attack. Have a listen, and I want to get your reaction. Are any of these partisans supported by the Ukrainian special services, for instance? Because Ukraine says it's got nothing to do with this attack. Do you believe that claim? Well, look, uh, Ukraine indeed has nothing to do with this. Uh, because it's all organized by Russians. He's saying this could be a Russian attack on Russia. Partisans, those who oppose the leadership of Vladimir Putin. Credible? It, it's a credible scenario. Uh, probably not likely, but it's possible. I mean, these are large drones. They could have to, mm. they'd have to hide them in a shipping container or a truck yeah. of some sort, somehow get it close to Moscow, perhaps pull them out, launch them. I mean, those kind of things could happen, mm -hmm. but I think it's pretty unlikely. I think it's really much a false flag operation that has occurred, and, uh, and we're seeing, you know, the reaction to that. Well, part of that false flag operation would be the follow-on. This is a message for, for the Kremlin on one of the Russian drones fired at Ukraine in the wake of all this. Uh, retired General Steve Anderson, thanks so much.